Good morning, this is Sam Miller with Miller Trailer Sales, and I'm going to be giving you a instructional walkthrough of the 2023 Tab 400 Boondock. So we're going to start in here on the inside. Um, some of the first things I like to go over with the camper is the warranties. So there are actually three warranties on the camper. So there is a, as you can see, a three-year transferable structural warranty. Now that structural warranty covers the whole structure of the camper. That is everything from the steel frame of the camper, steel base of the camper, up to the structural frame, which is the aluminum frame of the camper there, sidewalls, roof, ceiling, interior, interior, and the floor as well. So now the transferable, you may ask, what does that mean transferable? So if you decided that say after like year and a half, two years, you decide to upgrade your trailer to a different one, or you decided to sell the trailer and move to a different kind of camper. You, whatever is left on the warranty, if it's still within the three years, that can transfer to the new owner and they would have whatever's left on the structural warranty. Now, you, the other two warranties that you have here are your one year craftsmanship warranty that covers all the woodwork in the camper that is everything that you see the cabinetry to under the bed all that's covered under a one year limited warranty now your other one year warranty um, that is not listed as one of these certificates is on the trim so your exterior trim your handles your handle covers and your fenders all have a one year limited warranty on them so if something was to happen during that time same thing with the three-year structural. Um, you are required to send pictures to your dealer and then they will take care of reaching out to New Camp. Once they get that covered, they will contact you and reach out to schedule it and let you know it was approved and the warranty work can be done by us. So as a dealer, we're able to, we have a full auto shop that we are able to do. It's a, it is an eight bay auto shop that we're able to do warranty and service work at. So that if you bring it to us there, we can schedule it and we can do the work for you here. If it's just small items that are warranty, that is not in here, that it's just small items like, you know, a clip falls off the window or you've got a cabinet latch or something there. We can have that, get that warranty. You just send us a picture, we can have, get it approved and then we can have the parts sent directly to you versus you bringing the trailer to us to do the work unless it's something you don't feel comfortable doing um, with that so then you can just take care of doing that yourself and then you don't have to worry about taking your trailer anywhere um, outside of your home uh, the other thing that we have here is that you will want to make sure that um, when you're going through here that you look at what is not covered by the limited warranty. So basically the things that are not covered by the limited warranty would be things like your appliances. So you have right here excluded from coverage. That would be things like your different um, things from your axle to your radio to the tires. Um, all of those things would have their own separate warranties, which you would have to go through and register the different products yourself. Now, what it is is that um, when you get the camper, from the day you buy the camper, your warranty for the camper goes into effect. So, like say you're buying it from us there, what we would do is that we would go through the camper there. When you pay for the camper, I will take your camper and register it with New Camp. Once it's registered with New Camp, all your warranties go into effect for the camper itself. Now for appliances, you have to go online. Um, you have to go into the different booklets, which are in this pack, in this pack here, you've got all of your information um, and instruction manuals for your different booklets here. You will need to go through them and you will need to find the different warranties and registrations there and register the different appliances. Because you know how it goes, the one thing that you forget to register there is always the first thing that breaks. It's just how it goes. It's Newton's law. Um, but the other thing that you want to also keep in mind is that when you go to register it there, most of the places for the appliances, they will honor from the day that you bought the camper. So say you didn't get to register the camper for at least 
for like, you know, you forgot to do it for like another two, three weeks there. They will still do it, honor the date that you bought the camper, which if you bought the camper today, you would, they would honor it from today and that's the date that you would list and that's when your warranty would go into effect um, for that. So that is something that you wanna make sure you do. The other thing that you wanna also make sure you do um, is this was, would be your, ins your instruction manual for the camper itself. It's your owner's manual. This should always be your primary source of information for the camper for care and for any questions that you have about it. If you can't find the information in here, your next step should be going to your dealer or going to contacting New Camp um, with that. So New Camp has a customer experience department right on here. There's customer experience, there is the warranty, and there is the tech support. So warranties, if you have certain questions about warranty that we can't answer, you can contact them directly. Customer experience is really a great place to go. They're really good at answering questions about the camper itself. And the tech department is really good about that. They work with the structural frames. If you have a more detailed structural question that can't be answered by warranty or customer experience, you can reach out to them and they will um, help you there. You just contact the tech department. They're very quick at getting back. Usually within a day or two, they'll get back to you. Now, with your owner's manual, what you want to do is, you, like I was saying, you want to go from, if you can't find it here, contact your dealer or contact New Camp. If, what, if they aren't able to help you or you're not able to reach them there, your last step should be social media and YouTube. You never want to use social media and YouTube as your primary source of information to go to first because what happens is that when you're a new camper owner and you've never owned a trailer before you go to people that are all experienced they'll give you shortcuts on things that are not able to uh not necessarily going to work for you because you're going to find out you're in shortcuts over time so you want to be able to go through and figure out what you need to learn how to do first they're really good resources after that, but don't use that as your first source to go to. Um, the other thing that you wanna do with this here is in your manual, there is a really great, uh, find the page here, um, it is called the maintenance schedule. And so this actually gives you a full layout showing you everything of what you need to do. Pre-trip, monthly, three months, six months, yearly, um, it's what you do need to take care of. Now, if you say you are a Pennsylvania resident, um, you would need to get your trailer inspected once a year. Um, any In Pennsylvania, any trailers over 3,000 pounds do require that you have to have a year and um, an annual Pennsylvania state inspection do. I'm not sure how it is with every state. I know like in New York, they require that any trailer that is over 999 pounds, you have to have a working brake controller in the um, installed on the trailer um, so that they are able so that you're able to brake with the uh, the camper there and they do require that you have to get an inspection done of the trailer out there but different states have different requirements there the other thing that you also have is a maintenance schedule and this is shows you where you can put your date description service center when you get a trailer done it's a really good way to be able to keep track of things and be able to know when you get stuff taken care of. Um, the other option, other thing that I like to tell people too is to also get a small notebook that you keep in the trailer um, itself so that when you go on trips that you can mark down how many miles you traveled with, um, how many miles you traveled with your trailer there so that you can be able to track how long um, it is till you need service on different items. And it also allows you to also know what trips you took. It's a good way to be able to keep detail of what you do. Um, the things that you do want to keep in mind is that for the tires, uh, tires typically have about a five-year life on them, um, so you want to keep in mind for that. Um, the other thing that you also want to uh, keep in mind is that for your wheel bearings, um, your wheel bearings need to have a, need to be um, repacked and brakes checked. Um, after about 10,000 miles that you need to get that checked there 
and the wheel bearings repacked and re-greased. So that's just a couple of things that you want to keep in mind with that. Um, uh, so in here, in your packet here, what you get, you have a whole little packet that you get here of your information. You get your keys, this stuff. This is a welcome pack from New Camp that they give you. So you get, you have your um, thing that shows the whole team. It shows Scott Hubble, the CEO of New Camp. Um, so this is kind of their welcome card to you, welcome you to the family. You have a New Camp hand towel as well. And then they also give you a pack of playing cards. You've got a little corkscrew um, bottle opener there. And then you've also got a four inch square drive, which is really nice because almost everything in here uses one size screw. They make it very convenient for you, um, which is really nice. So you can just use the four inch screw and keep that in the camper there. And then you also have a tactical flashlight as well. So these are kind of things that you want to keep with your camper. Um, there, so this is your little packet, which they give a really nice little bag with the camper now. Um, this is a water pressure regulator, which with the 400s and 320s, it is required that you have this a water pressure regulator. You can get use just the plastic one, or you can get a brass one as well that you can find online. We The one we use is a Camco brass um, lead-free um, water pressure regulator. And so if you use that, what you need to do is that when you get to campsites, it's really important that you put this on the end of the hose and that and uh, the end of the hose that is going to go to the water spigot. And then you hook this up to the water spigot so that it regulates the pressure coming out. Because a lot of campgrounds are set to really high pressures because of the bigger campers that can come in. This camper can only handle no more than 50 PSI. So you do need to make sure that you have this on the end of the hose. Just never make the mistake of putting this regulator onto the actual camper side. Because if you put it onto the camper, it's not going to be able to regulate the pressure coming in and it could potentially blow out your plumbing lines. So that's the first thing you don't want to do on your first trip that you go out. So another thing that you want to look at here is this is something that um, I'll show you. I um, can always show you outside if you need to, um, but I'm probably going to just let you be able to do this on line there. What's great is this is what's called a um, tank sensor. And what this does is this goes onto the bottom of the tank. It actually has a Bluetooth signal. I know technology, right, these days. Um, but you put a, it reads through Bluetooth signal, and this little piece hooks onto the bottom of the tank. And you have to put it right in the center of the tank, and then you sync it up with your an app on your phone. And then what it will do is it will allow you to be able to always know how much propane is in your tank at any time. Um, there, so it will let you notification send you notifications when the tank is low, and will let you know that hey, you're down to ten percent. You might want to get this filled soon. So that is something that you want to make sure that you put on the bottom and there's a really great instructional video for how to install this on YouTube. So if you look that up and the app that you're gonna look for, it's called Mopika Tank Check and it's gonna look exactly like this symbol right here, okay? So you wanna make sure that you can go online um, and be able to download that app. That way you can be able to have it right up with your phone. Um, the other app that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have, aside from that, is called Victron Connect. Um, with that. So something that you want to do with this is it's going to, when you go look in on the app store, you're going to look for the one that has this symbol. And what's great about this app is that the app is always going to allow you to be able to set your, set it so that your phone will always be able to tell you what the solar is charging at, at any time. Um, and there's it. And there's also some great YouTube videos about this as well, that you can go online and look. Um, but what's nice about the instructional um, with that is it will t always let you know how much solar your camper is charging at. And then you also need to know how much, um, show you how much the battery is charging at and shows you how many watts, volts that the solar is charging your battery with. So you can always just kind of keep an eye and then it allows you to be able to also know how many uh, you can go back as far as 30 days and be able to know 
what it charged your battery to. Say like three days ago, you want to know how much it actually charged your battery to. You can go back and you can check that there um, for that. So that's a really good app to be able to uh, use with that. So go through with that. Um, this is for the filter for your air conditioner. Um, so your air conditioner filter, I should stand up here, let me spin this over. It's located right underneath here. So you would just pull this up and you just change this filter out when you want to. Now these are not, these are not ones that you are able to just, uh, you're not able to just clean them, like rinse them out and be able to, and have them like that. Okay, so what you would need to do is you would actually have to go through um, getting a new one there to replace it there if you ran out of this one. Okay, now all of this stuff can be put right into your bag here. You've got a brand new, got a new new camp bag on um, the that. Now you've got your keys, which I'll be going through with when we go outside. You've got two sets. Um, you have two black keys, which are your entry door keys. And then this is your gold keys, which allow you to lock the storage door on the outside and your Nautilus system on the other side. So we are going to put that right there. Um, I will be showing you how to set this down from the dining area down to your just setting it down as a regular couch area. Um, there will be a link that you can you can actually go onto on YouTube if you wanted to see how the bunk bed option is set up. Um, I may also do a video um, showing how the bunk bed is set up, but we're not going to do that today. Like that. So, what we're going to do here is, for right now, I'm going to show you, just take you on a little walk through around the inside here. So, over here you've got your pockets. Over right here, for these are actually steps when you have the bunk bed set up. Over on the side here, now this bottom area here, now something that we actually are able to do here, which not sure if other dealers are doing it there, but we have actually found that there are people that want the ability to be able to have extra um, 120 outlets to be able to use up in the dining area here um, that they wouldn't be able to use if they're not connected to electric. Now what we are able to offer with that is we are actually able to install a four outlet surge protector that can go inside of this pocket right up along the wall and we are able to wire that directly into the 1200 watt inverter that would allow you the ability to have those extra outlets in the front here um, so that would give you four additional outlets that you'd be able to use if you were working remotely and you need to use this as a home office that would give you those extra outlets. Otherwise, you would only have access to the one 120 outlet in the front, over on the side here, and then you've got your USB and 12 volt port right there. Now, over on the side here, I'm gonna show you since we're over here, there is your Aldi glycol, which is right on the inside. So your Aldi glycol, you would access this panel by pulling this out, and you can see there is your glycol bottle right on the inside. Now, if you need to fill that bottle at any point, what you would need to do is you would just take a bottle of a gallon of the glycol there, you unscrew the cap, take a plastic cup, pour the glycol in, and then pour it in from the top of the glycol bottle. Once that is filled, once that is up to the full mark, which there is a full mark, there's a max and a minimum mark. You never want to overfill it because if you uh, if you overfill it, it could cause issues for you with that. So you want to make sure that you never overfill it there and make sure that it is just up to the max mark or right in the middle um, with that. It's not very often you're going to be going through that that quickly unless you are running multiple things off of the propane and the all these system that are going to be using it. That's that would be you'd have to be using your propane and your hot water a lot while you're boondocking there in order for you to be going down on that all these system or the uh, glycol very fast. 
So you've got your window shade right here. Comes down on that side there. You have speakers on the front sides over here. So you have a speaker here, a speaker on the inside, the other side. You have your speakers in the back as well. Um, over here, you've got your all the you've got your control panel up here. So you've got your fresh tank. You got your black tank. You have your gray tank right here. So you just push the button here, and that will tell you what that's at. You get your water pump switch, which is right here. Now your water pump switch. You have a switch inside and outside. Now the thing about that is that is a two-way switch. So if I turn it on in here, I can turn it off outside because I'll see the light outside, and I can flip that off. There, if I missed, if I forgot or something and realized that it was still on, I could go out there and turn it off if I was already outside for, so that I didn't have to come inside and do it. Now you've got your different switches. You've got your porch light, which is on the outside there. You have your sink light and your accent light. Now your sink light is right here. Your accent light brings up your lights all along the inside here and over on this side. And in order to turn this switch on here, you do have to have um, there's this little light right on the inside here. Um, it's a little LED light here, but you do have to have the accent light turned on to be able to turn this one on as well to give you that additional light. Now, you've got your extra light at the top over here. This is a blue light. You push it once, it's blue. You turn it up three, and it will go up with the lights there and make it nice and bright in here. Now the window shades and screens, you've got your window shades and screens here. Now you've got your screens that go down, your window shades go up. Now if you're wanting to lock them in, you just bring, just bring this down, lock it into place with the clip. Just make sure that when you're bringing it out, people break these very easily. Just make sure you pull out on the top and bring it down. And when you're bringing these back up, you always want to make sure that you're using your fingers to guide it back into its channel up at the top and the bottom there. Same thing for the shades. The shades, you do want to make sure that you use the accordion style. Bring your fingers in and guide it back into the track. Um, it is really important that when you're traveling that you never want to have the shade up in this position there because that can actually cause... Uh, tension on the actual shade itself that could make it that actually cause it where it's going to start collapsing um, on you there so um, the other thing you also want to do is that when you're bringing these up always make sure you use two hands versus just using one hand to bring it down because what that will do is cause tension on the sides here and that can actually loosen the strings on the inside and it's going to cause your whole shade and screen to just start collapsing um, another thing that you want to make sure you know about this, because we had this happen with a customer, when they went out to a really hot area, like in um, uh, Utah, that you go out there, like Moab, Utah, there and stuff, they have, it gets up to like over 100 degrees out there. And what happens there is if you have the shade up in this position like this, and you're parked out in the sun, that shade is going to collect all the heat right on the inside of here. And what that will do is that will actually melt this entire frame all on the side. And it will cause this whole thing to become deformed. So you, it is really important that you don't leave this, especially the shade, in the position there that is going to collect the heat when you are... Um, away from the camper for a significant amount, amount of time. If you're out in the sun, you can put the sheet, you can put the screen down, and that's fine because it's not going to collect the heat like the shade would. Now, the big thing here at the windows that is important is that you you push this open here. You would lock this up into place with the knobs, and that would allow you to be able to lock this here in the space. Now when you're bringing this back down here, undo the knobs here, drop this down. Now there's two positions with this here. So you have a half position and you have a whole position right here. So for the half position, you bring this into here, you lock that in and that's gonna allow space 
in between here for that if you wanted to leave the position in the half position on all the windows there this would allow you to be able to get airflow coming through here so it wouldn't be so hot when you are away from the camper there but you don't want to travel with it in the half position because if there is rain that you're traveling with the rain could potentially get in along the sides so when you're traveling just always make sure you bring it back in to the fully locked position and just always make sure that it's locked on all sides there now for that where i was talking about with the window the screen and shade especially on the angle windows which are the front and the back window the stargazer you do need to make sure that you are always using two hands bringing those up and down it's important on all the windows but especially the angle windows because those will get the most tension if you're just using one hand bringing it up and down it's more likely that those are going to come loose on the shades and screens because you're because of how you are doing it bringing it up and down with force so you just got to be really careful with how you do that then. so we're going to come over here You've got your fan right here. So when you're opening the fan up, you're gonna open up here. You have it, this is, this direction is for bringing the air in. And then you can reverse it for taking the air out. And when you are bringing it down, Always make sure it's fully in the closed position. Never over tighten these knobs here because these will break very easily. If you take over tighten it too much, just get it snug to make sure that it's not going to break because if you start twisting it too much there, it's going to snap it right off. And those pieces alone are worth about $35 each um, for that. Now over here we've got your sink. You got your sink here for um, your circular sink and you've got your stove here now the important thing with the stoves and the 400s there is that when you lift these up they have if you can see there is a catch right here and it's really important that you don't ever let this catch uh, when you're going to close it there that you always make sure you lift up on here if you hear that click that means that you can bring it rotate it back down Otherwise, what's going to happen is if you try to pull that down, that's going to snap the catch on both of these hinges there, which is going to make it so that if you, when you go to close it, it's not going to stand up full anymore. And it's, it will sit back like this, but when you go like this, it's going to just fall down. So it is really important that you do that. When you are cooking just and you have this leaning back, just always make sure you have the screen or shade open so that it's not going to put uh, indents or pressure on the window itself. Now, when you go to light the stove, you're gonna turn it to the light mode, and then you just push the button there, and that will turn on right away. And as you can see, it lit up right, right off the bat there. You just turn it to the light mode, and then you can adjust it to high or low, depending on what you wanna do um, for adjusting the flame. Now, on the inside, what is really important with these stoves as now everybody knows there is a little AAA battery right on the inside here. And it's really important that you always take the AAA battery out when you're storing the camper for long periods of time um, or for the winter. That you take the battery out of here and you also take battery out of any of the remote controls that you have for the audio system. Because if you don't, if you do that, if you uh, don't do that, then what's going to happen is that it's going to cause battery corrosion um, our battery leaking because the batteries are going to be sitting there for long periods of time. So we're going to do is we're going to pull this out and drop that back down. Now for your audio system, you can use, it's got an HDMI, it's got the radio, AM and FM radio, and then you've got auxiliary so that if you want to connect in with a cable hookup, you can do that from the outside. If you had a cable hookup at a campground or you had a digital antenna, you can plug that in from the outside. But most common what people end up using is streaming devices because that's one of the most common things people can just carry with them because they have stuff on their phone, they have the Roku stick, Fire Stick, Chromecast, all those type of items. 
Now you have two different sources that you can use for plugging in like a Fire Stick or a Roku Stick. Now, for example here, I've got the Fire Stick, which is set up right here. So now what you have to do is you would turn on the TV first. So push the power button to turn the TV on. This is my Roku Stick, or my um, Fire Stick up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Roku Stick, I would turn the, radio, turn the power button on here and I would turn this over to auxiliary in. And once I get the fire stick set up here, if I take this, you plug in the USB cord here. You would take this and you plug this right into here. And what that's gonna do is now it's gonna kick right onto the TV and you're gonna see it's already all set up for being able to watch something. So if I wanted to be able to choose something there, I could just easily go down. I could go over to like, I have it set up for the, just like Pluto TV. I could click that and that would be able to connect right in to Pluto TV there. And then I could just open that up and that would start right away. And then I could be able to watch a movie right, right off the bat there. Now, what you wanna do is that if you are at if you're over at a uh, campground and they have Wi-Fi at the campground, then you can always get a Wi-Fi extender so that it would allow you to be able to pick up the connection from further away. Um, if you are at a place that you're going to be traveling there and you want to use your mobile hotspot, they do have a lot of phone companies have mobile hotspot um, packages that you can buy for like more uh, amount of time. Uh, that you want to be able to use it or it will give you it, it gives you a certain amount of data that you can use with that and then you, all you would do is just connect it through your phone and then it allows you to be able to hook up like for example where we're here in the back here at our um at our location there we're not able to connect pick up the wi-fi signal because it's too far away so we used a mobile hotspot connected right in with the phone and that linked it right up so that we could connect right in for here um, so I have that linked right up here and you can use it from right here um, up on the top or you can use it right through the back of the TV. If you take off this HDMI cable right here and you unplug that and you would plug the fire, fire stick right into there and then you would just use, you can either use the USB cord and plug that into the USB port or you can plug it in via the 120 outlet with that and it works right up links right in and it's a great option to go with now with the tv here sample here you can take this you can swing this out if you wanted to be able to watch tv while you're up in the front uh, in the dining area that way you can watch a movie or something there this has the arm just make sure that when you're traveling that you always put this back into place so that way it's linked back up there, and then you just turn this back up here and we're going to put that back in there and it's all set back into place. You got two remotes. You have a TV remote and you have your Jensen remote, which is the Jensen that is for your, your stereo system up here. Now over on the top, you got AM and FM radio. So you would use this here and you would control the volume. You control the volume for this here. And you've got AM and FM, you can control the zone A and zone B. So zone A is your speakers in the front, zone B is your speakers in the back. And then if you want both, you would just turn that on. Now for your Bluetooth, for your Bluetooth there, you would just turn to Bluetooth mode, hold down the button until it goes into the pairing mode. Then you just find Bluetooth on your phone do a scan and it will link it right up so that you can have that ready to go. Now you've got HDMI in here and you've also got your auxiliary in. Now as you saw and stuff, we had this set up for the fire stick, we had it turned to auxiliary, auxiliary in right here. Um, 
auxiliary in for this here. So you have to have auxiliary in here and you would have HDMI set up on the TV um, or you can do the HDMI um, in here depending on what you do, depending on what you are using. Like from the back of the TV, if you plug it into the back of the TV, you have to use the auxiliary in to be able to get the sound right through. This, um, believe for what you're using from here, you do have to use auxiliary in, um, depending on what you are using there. Sometimes you might have to use the HDMI, but that is something that you can always read in your booklet to know what you need to do with that. Um, if you go to zone A up here, and you hold down the button, that's gonna allow you to be able to adjust the bass, treble, balance, to fade, kind of like in a stereo system that you'd be able to use. You can adjust that to what you need. Now for zoom B, if you hold down the button there, you can do the dimmer on or off. So like dimmer changes the lights, makes it brighter, makes it not so bright. Um, and then you go here, there's dimmer, volume, time, and reset mode for this. And then you would just take this, hold down the button, that would turn your stereo system off. And then I would just unplug this and use that right now. Now for your, you've got your isotherm fridge here. Now this is, you have the set here. Um, you get your freezer with a mini ice cube tray up at the top. And then for your knob here, you would turn this up to what you would want it to start at, and depending on that. So typically you want to have it usually about a five or a six, nice and cold there. Now if you're going to be using your fridge when you're going to travel, um, what you want to do is get your frit, get your camper plugged in the night before, get it nice and cold on the inside, and then just before you're ready to leave, go ahead and unplug your camper and plug it into your vehicle in the 7RB plug and then this will be able to run um, at this temperature. Whatever temperature you have when you leave is the temperature that's going to be in the camper here. It's going to keep it nice and cold at that temperature when you're driving there. It's not going to get any colder, so just may be aware of that, that it's not going to get any colder if you were expecting it to be really cold. But you can put stuff in, you can put any cold stuff in there. You can put a frozen meat and let it thaw out while you're driving. The thing that you don't want to do is put anything that's warm or hot on the inside and expect it's going to be cold because the minute you put something uh, hot in here and you're not connected to electric there, it's going to zap whatever um, is in the fridge there and it's going to zap that temperature right out of there and not be able to use that. Now the other thing that you have here is there is up at the top. This is a sliding piece right here, and if you move that, what that does is that will allow it so that when you go to close it, so if you notice right here, right now, this can stick in a place. So that's it. You've got the suction, the suction piece here. You just have to make sure that if you're using this where you want it to, you want it to make it so that it's not going to, uh, that you want it to be able to uh, thaw out on the inside that you wanted to get any of the condensation there You can have it in the position where it's going to keep it so that it, the door is not closed all the way Like this and it would make it so that it's a little bit looser and it can come out There but right now it's set in the mode that it's going to keep it Nice and it's going to keep it closed fully I'm going to turn this switch off here And close that into place now you've got all your different cabinet drawers up along the top here. And then on the bottom, you've got your fuse box, and breaker box right along here. So fuses here, these are just standard car fuses. You can just go to like an auto parts store and just grab a box of assorted fuses so that you have them. They work just the same. You've got your breakers here, which are all marked. So you know what to look for if something was to blow. You have your under the bed drawer right here. And you've got your drawer that pulls out from here. So I'm gonna stand up so you can actually see how it works. And then there's your under the bed drawer works right here. And lock that back into place. Now over on the side, what we need to do here. So we're gonna go up along the side here.
And on the inside, this is your Nautilus system right here. So your Nautilus system allows you to be able to, you can control all of your fittings in the back here. Now it's really important that every couple times that you go to, uh, go to travel there that you wanna make sure you go through finger tight all these black fittings on the inside to make sure that nothing gets loose while you're traveling. Okay, so you've got all these here and then once you've got the finger tight, you can take a pair of pliers and do a quarter turn on any of these fittings here to make sure that nothing comes loose while you've traveled. Now over on the side here, you've also got your mixing valve right here. So the mixing valve makes it so that when you are, that if you, if the hot and cold water came through, just as it was, if the hot water came out just as it was, it would be like 190 to 200 degrees. What this does is the mixing valve, we turn it right in the middle. Um, you turn it to hot, you turn it to cold, and you turn it back to the middle to make sure that it has it so that the water is going to mix when it gets there and it will come out to about 150 degrees max. Now, if you want to be able to adjust the hot water, you can adjust it to hot, more hot, or more cold, depending on what you want to have. Um, so I'm going to push that back down into place and lock that in. Now, you've got your water pump over here. If you are boondocking consistently, then one of the things you do need to do with this here is you need to unscrew this cap right here. You would unscrew this piece here. And inside here you've got the you've got the filter piece right in here. Now this is your water filter screen, and you want to make sure that if you're boondocking there that you always uh, take this screen out there. You want to make sure there's no grime or buildup that gets stuck inside of here. Um, and you want to make sure there's no water in here when you go to winterize the camper because if you go to winterize it and there is uh, there's water that's stuck in there that will crack your water fill your uh, water pump and it's going to cause you a lot of issues. So always make sure that you check this a few times a year to make sure that is you go and then you just got to screw this back into place on here. So I'm going to get this back and lined up here. If I can get this back and lined up. Okay. There we go. All right. So now screw back in and that's good to go.